Rising rent prices in the US. If you're thinking that you can't afford to buy a house, you might not have any luck in the rental market either. Here's the ugly truth. Rent prices have been going up. And it doesn't look like they'll stop anytime soon. What's going on? So what is going on exactly? Well, one of the biggest real estate listing platforms, Realtor.com, recently released a report showing that nationwide the median rent in the 50 largest metro areas hit a record high of $1,792 in February and has increased by 17% in the last year. Of course, these changes cannot be taken lightly. In fact, this recent increase has proven to have a huge impact on a lot of Americans' budgets. According to a recent Zillow research, signing a one-year lease currently would cost about $3,400 more than signing the same lease two years ago. That's a lot of adjustments right there. According to experts, the majority of the national increase in rent cost was driven by substantial rises in Sunbelt locations, such as Miami and Austin, Texas, whose populations have been expanding in part due to pandemic-related changes, such as increased remote job prospects. Though rental rates initially fell as a result of the pandemic, they swiftly returned in 2021 and began to outperform pre-pandemic growth trends. These rising costs, along with a broader rise in inflation, have wiped out any salary improvements made by low-income Americans. As rental prices were already surpassing pay growth in the country, rents in the Sun Belt have risen at a rate of 22.5% in the last year. Between February 2021 and February 2022, the median rent in Miami alone increased by a whopping 55%. Meanwhile, according to a poll, rent cost in Orlando increased by over 30% just last year, while rent prices in Florida, New York, and New Jersey are also rising at an alarming rate. The same goes with Austin, Texas, which has the highest one-year gain of 40%. Why are rents skyrocketing? Rising rents are closely related to America's housing crisis. The surge in property prices in the United States has prompted more people to rent, including many who may have become homeowners in the past. As a result, the rental market has become crowded, with more affluent residents competing with lower-income tenants. Rents are expected to climb as the number of renter households continues to expand, increasing the demand for new supply. Even now, in markets where apartment housing is being built to relieve pressure, construction may not be enough to prevent additional rent increases. Other variables such as job growth and favorable demographics may cause rents to rise despite new constructions. Because developers tend to construct luxury units aimed at higher income households, the high rents these units command raise the average while there is still a limited number of intermediate and low-cost units. Who is impacted by the soaring rent prices? Rent and home ownership are heavily influenced by the millennial generation, which has now grown to be the largest generation in history. The national average hourly wage for millennials is $21.80, which is $5.78 lower than the average. Believe it or not, millennials are actually spending a larger percentage of their income on rent because of the high cost of living. A millennial, on average, will spend $93,000 on rent by the time they are 30 years old. According to a recent study, between the ages of 22 and 30, they spend 45% of their salary on rent. Even though rents have gone up, home ownership has stayed low because renting is still cheaper than owning. In fact, more than 7 out of 10 millennial renters say that renting is cheaper than owning a home. In contrast to millennials, Generation Xers and baby boomers spent less on rent. According to the same study, Generation Xers spent 41% of their income on rent over an 80-year period, ages 22 to 30, whereas baby boomers spent 36%. When the housing market in the United States collapsed in 2008, many members of Generation X were in their 30s and 40s delaying their plans to buy a home and forcing them to return to renting. Despite this, they paid $10,400 less in rent than similarly aged millennials. 
showing an increase in rent since the crash of the housing market. Which cities currently have the highest rent prices? Now let's go ahead and take a quick look at some of the cities with the highest rent prices as of March of this year. But before we continue, go ahead and click the subscribe and like buttons. It takes a lot to make these videos. Your small actions tell YouTube to keep promoting our videos. Also, tell us in the comment section what you think are the best ways to cope with rising rent prices. Thanks. Now back to the video. Miami, Florida tops the list with an average rent rise of 55.3%. Rental prices in Miami are among the most expensive across all of the United States, with a median price of $2,929 a month. Analysts note that these figures are distorted by the huge number of luxury properties listed in the city last month, which accounts for almost 60% of the city's median household income. Los Angeles is the second most expensive city to rent in, with a typical rent of $2,993, or 46% of the median local household income. February saw rent take up 29.7% of the average household's income in the 50 largest U.S. metro regions, up from 24.8% a year prior. Orlando, with an average increase of 35.4%, and Tampa with an increase of 32.3% are the next two cities in the same state. Texan cities Austin and San Diego are also in the top 10, with an average rise of 28.1% and 25.4% respectively. Of course, Las Vegas, Nevada and Phoenix, Arizona are somewhat expected to be on the list at 25.1% and 25% respectively. Rents in other U.S. cities peaked in March this year at 24.9% in Jacksonville, Florida, 24.2% in San Antonio, and 23.4% in Memphis, Tennessee. Should we start adjusting our budgets? Financial experts usually say that you shouldn't spend more than 30% of your monthly income on rent. But if prices keep going up, and rents keeps going up, it can be hard for the average American to afford that. This is still a good rule of thumb to keep in mind though. If you can follow the 30% rule, it can help you keep your overall finances stable and avoid financial stress. For the average person, the 30% rule helps them avoid overspending. Financial advisors believe that the more money you spend on housing, the less money you have to spend on other things. A financial planner and partner at Egan Berger & Weiner LLC a retirement planning and investment management firm says that sticking to the 30% rule also allows you to save for other financial goals like retirement without having to cut back on your current standard of living. It can be hard to follow the 30% rule when rents are rising in almost every major city. It can also be hard for renters with low incomes to find a place that costs less than 30% of their monthly income. Does this mean we should shift to buying a home? Rentals have become more popular in recent years because many people can't afford to buy a home or don't want to deal with the cost of a mortgage. People who work for big businesses are putting even more pressure on home prices by buying single-family homes and renting them out. Economy experts are saying that rent prices are likely to stay high, although they're expected to slow down a little from the recent rapid pace. Apart from that, bank rates will keep going up which will make the question of whether or not to buy or rent even more difficult to answer.